Our learns his fate, a surprise announcement from Michigan State University. We'll break down tonight's developments. New at 11, county commissioners go back to hiring mode after an unexpected departure. Hear why they're now working on a tight deadline. For guys, this may seem like an everyday thing, but more and more women are microblading for beauty. We'll break down the pros and cons of this booming trend. This is 7 and 4 News at 11. I'm good evening. I'm Mark Shillette. And I'm Kristen Lowe. Your top news stories are coming up, but as always, a look at your forecast. First at 11 with 7 and 4 Storm Team meteorologist Joe Charlevoix. Hey, Joe. Hey there, guys. A pretty quiet evening across uh, the area. We've had some clouds hanging around today, but outside of that, just a few flurries, a quiet night, and we should see a pretty decent uh, commute into work tomorrow morning. There's really not a whole lot going on. Radar, the last few hours, some flurries, and uh, some of these will hang around through tonight, especially near Lake Michigan, but we're not looking at much accumulation. We are on the edge of some much colder weather. It's only 7 right now at Pelston, but you see that area in the pink up there in Ontario? That's where temperatures are below zero this evening, but that's, again, northeast of us. And while we have a cold night on tap tonight, the bigger story is what's on the way. We have a big warm-up coming in, some flurries through tomorrow, but then warmer weather rolling in by Friday. And over the next few days, little snow accumulation is expected. We'll show you how warm it gets. We're also going to take you into your weekend. What you can expect for that coming up in a few minutes. Thanks, Joe. Breaking news out of East Lansing. On the day that Larry Nassar was sentenced to up to 175 years in prison, the president of Michigan State University, Luana K. Simon, has resigned. Now, we wanted to know more about Simon. Here's what we learned tonight. She earned her doctorate from MSU in 1974. In 2005, she became the first female president of the university. Some sources state the first person to complain about Nassar to the university was in 1997. During during her presidency, multiple victims claimed the university was not responsive to their complaints about Nassar. Michigan State fired Nassar in 2016 after a 2014 camp complaint about his treatments. Now that same year, President Simon cracked the top 10 for highest paid university leaders in the country. She made $850,000. Simon's resignation comes just hours after a judge sentenced Nassar to 40 to 175 years in prison. After seven days of emotional testimony from more than 150 victims, the former USA gymnastics doctor addressed his victims in an Ingham County courtroom, saying, quote, I will carry your words with me for the rest of my days. Well, days of emotional testimony have brought national attention to Michigan State University. In light of that, victims, faculty, and tonight, lawmakers called for Simon's resignation. Just hours ago, U.S. Senator Gary Peters released a statement about the future of his alma mater, saying, quote, Michigan State University has a long way to go in rebuilding trust with its students, athletes, faculty, alumni, and the entire state of Michigan. To do so, it must have new leadership. Senator Peters wasn't the only lawmaker calling for a change in leadership at MSU. Now, late this afternoon, the Michigan House of Representatives voted 96 to 11 in favor of a resolution calling for Simon to resign. Our political reporter Nick Minock was the only television reporter in the state house chamber during that vote. In an effort led by Speaker Tom Leonard and some Democrats, the State House approved a resolution to call on Michigan State University President Luanna Simon to resign after what Leonard calls egregious handling of the Larry Nassar case. This situation, I, I, I've never seen a situation that has been this mishandled. Leonard is also calling out the MSU Board of Trustees. The fact that she was given a $150,000 pay increase, uh, the fact that uh, only one of the trustees still to this day says she needs to resign and they continue to stand behind her. Um, but probably even most egregious, uh, just some of the comments uh, that came out from one of the trustees yesterday um, has pretty much made clear to me that these trustees care more about their skyboxes during the fall than they do these 150 plus victims. The resolution is long overdue. Some Democrats told us in order to ensure sexual predators don't work for MSU, there needs to be a change in culture. In order for those efforts to have any credibility, it's important that a new interim president be appointed and head up those efforts. But as the votes were tallied, we learned some lawmakers did not feel the House should call on Simon to step down. Uh, but why'd you vote the way you voted? No Some lawmakers told us this non-binding resolution was about politics. A resolution that, again, has no legal standing. We're playing a game of politics. 
All right, so here's what happens next. The NCA is launching an investigation into how Michigan State University handled the Nassar case. And the Michigan State Board of Trustees has requested the Attorney General to investigate how the university handled the complaints against Nassar. Simon's resignation is expected to be finalized by Friday. If you would like to read her complete resignation letter, we have a link to that on our website, upnorthlive.com. New tonight at 11, a 52-year-old man is in the Clare County Jail after deputies say he threatened a school shooting at Mid-Michigan Community College. It happened around 4 this afternoon at the campus in Hatton Township. Deputies say the suspect is a student who was reportedly being disruptive and then later made threats to come back and commit a school shooting. The campus went into threat mode as a precautionary measure. Detectives later arrested the man at his home in Roscommon County. Tonight, he's in jail on pending charges. In Charlevoix County, school will be back in session tomorrow after a bomb threat at Boyne City High School. Students K through 12 were released early today. Boyne City Police, a K-9 unit, and Charlevoix County Sheriff's deputies searched three buildings on campus. The all clear was given around 1 p.m. Police are not saying how the threat was made and are still searching for whoever's responsible. We're told there will be extra law enforcement monitoring the district tomorrow. If you know anything, please call law enforcement. New tonight at 11 Grand Traverse County commissioners are moving forward with trying to find their next administrator and making plans if it turns into a long process. At tonight's meeting, the board discussed budget goals for faculty or facility improvements, IT upgrades, commission on aging and more. But really, the big topic tonight was who's going to replace interim administrator Jean Dorenzi when she leaves March 1st to become the executive director for the Downtown Development Authority. The board says both under Sheriff Nate Alger and Deputy Civil Counsel Chris Forsyth have agreed to be the interim administrative team while the board hires a new administrator. I think the county board uh, today identified that it's not so much the hurry on finding the administrator, but find, finding the, the administrator that works for Grand Traverse County. So. The cohesiveness of the board was identified today, and they should be very proud that they are moving forward and it's together. There will be a special meeting with a hiring team next week. Commissioners say they want to be more involved in the hiring process for the next administrator. Remember, you can find the latest news, sports, and weather updates on our website, upnorthlive.com, 24 hours a day. Coming up, tiny needles cutting into the faces of hundreds of thousands of women. Hear why this beauty trend is so popular and what the common misconceptions may be next. And here in the weather office, a pretty quiet night. We're dodging a few flurries tonight and we have a warm up on the way. I'll show you how warm it gets. The break. I'm Jada Johnson with Big Voice TV and the Fish and Game Report is sponsored by Johnson's Propane. The following segment is sponsored by Traverse City State Bank. I'm Kelly Shramsky, commercial lender at Traverse City State Bank. Here's a look at today's market report. I'm Alert Desk in Washington. I'm Lindsay Mastis. At least four people are dead and many others hurt in a bombing and shootout outside one of the Save the Children offices in Afghanistan. That gun battle lasted about 10 hours. The Islamic State is claiming responsibility for that attack. Save the Children carries out humanitarian work for young people around the world. The first trial connected to the deadly 2015 Paris terror attacks started as planned. A protest by prison guards was going to impact the start of the trial, but it did not. The person on trial is accused of helping two of the attackers hide from police. From the Terrorism Alert Desk in Washington, I'm Lindsay Mastis.